Hey guys, HDV here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we've got some massive DLC information to go over for the Teal Mask. Loads of new gameplay features have been revealed in a review copy of the DLC. We're going to be breaking all of it down today. So if you're excited for the video, as always, make sure to drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 500 likes. It really helps out. Leave a comment with your thoughts on anything we cover in today's video. Subscribe if you're brand new for daily Pokemon content. Ring the notification bell. With all of that out of the way though, let's get into the video and a really hope that you enjoy. So starting things off, this is what we're going to be going over today. So basically somebody was very lucky enough to get to play the Teal Mask DLC as like a review kind of thing. And they basically just posted all of their kind of findings and how they like kind of found playing the, the DLC and stuff. Again, there's no like massive leaks in this or anything like that, but there are new gameplay features, new gameplay things, uh, obviously new images that we went over yesterday. But there's like a ton of new stuff that is in this that uh, obviously we didn't know about the DLC already. Now, of course, it has been translated from Japanese to English. Um, so, you know, Google Translate is hit or miss with a lot of things. But we do have the main things kind of like summed up as well on like Sarah B and uh, with Pogsy Tommy and stuff talking about it. But uh, anyway, this is kind of the, uh, the we're going to quickly go over the, the kind of review and then we'll go over like the main, main points as well. So um, the interpretation of the presence uh, of the crabs in the rural landscape is very consistent and stuff. So the first thing that jumped out to me when I started ex the experience as a Japanese style rural landscape with extremely high resolution. The moment uh, that they saw the kind of like Pokemon stuff flying above the terraces, she felt like she was returning home uh, for the holiday. In reality, she is working in the bustling city of uh, these hills. When I play Pokemon related games, I often feel like I've stepped up in the world of Pokemon. However, this time I felt as if a Pokemon had jumped out into the real world. So they're basically kind of um, saying that the DLC felt like a real world with Pokemon and not unless and not so much like a Pokemon world with like people and if that makes sense um, just because I'm assuming they have like this Japanese background and stuff and so obviously they, they experience like the festival and stuff so if you look closely at the bus stop timetable you'll see that there are only a few buses running each day I'm not sure if we're going to be able to access the buses and we're just going to be able to like fast travel with them I don't really see the point in that because we can just fast travel anyway um, but uh, yeah there might be some sort of like bus kind of situation going on with the DLC and then I was as I was walking along, I thought there must be some crabs in the waterways, and there were. So obviously, you can find like crabs and stuff in the waterways. Of course, we went over the like the DLC images and stuff yesterday, but uh, yeah, there are kind of like new gestures and stuff that you can take with the the Rotom selfie stick and everything like that. Um, there's like a ton of different. I think there's like two or three new ones. Like there's this like V shape kind of thing. You can close your eyes. There's also like a shush one as well. Uh, Pokemon can now apparently get up on the roofs of buildings. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, we obviously have this kind of. Um, pond situation here again we went over this all in the dlc images uh then go on to say the main character is selected as a member of the forest school that is held jointly with blueberry academy and decides to visit kitakami village she travels to various places while interacting with students from blueberry academy and deepens her knowledge of kitakami's history focusing on folk tales uh, passed down on the village uh, again this seems to be some sort of like mayor or something like that for the uh, the kitakami um dlc and then also the Soryoku Town Community Center is the base of the Forest School. So this is the base of uh, kind of like all the operations for the Teal Mask DLC. This is where you're going to come back to like loads. And then participating from Blueberry Academy are the strong-willed older sister, uh, Zeal, which is Carmine, and the shy younger brother, Kieran. The two appear to be from the village of Kitakami and are staying at their parents' home. So they actually are from... Um, the the village there they are actually like local to the village but they do go to study in blueberry academy which is basically why they're like kind of visiting back but they are at their parents house in this uh dlc so uh carmine treats the main character as an outsider and takes a harsh attu uh, attitude towards him but on the other hand he seems to have a kind side um as well um as the as they worry about as based basically she's like very um kind of like harsh to you but she also looks after Kieran quite a lot as well um, and then also cares for the main character behind the scenes and then also Kieran often uses dialect words such as uh, Wyatt and Kapari although uh, Carmine did not the most impressive thing about uh, Kieran was uh, the mole on her neck um, so yeah actually has a mole on the neck as well didn't know that and then as with uh, Kieran's crying uh, I couldn't help but feel the designer was very uh, particular about the position of the mole I don't usually notice uh, but when I see a close-up of during battle I can't help but notice it so yeah, I don't know. Something about a mole there on Karen. Uh, the protagonist pairs up with uh, Karen and sets off on an orienteering tour. So this seems to be some sort of like task that you are going to be getting in the DLC for the Teal Mask. They hear about a story. I'm assuming this is Ogapon and the Legendary Three and stuff. Affectionately known as the heroes by the villagers who protected the village from a demon that was frightening the people. So yeah, one of the first tasks seems to be to going off somewhere with Karen. And this is where you stumble upon this like signpost. When you arrive at the Kitakami Center in the east of the village, so that's the location of it, you can participate 
in the festival which has been passed down from generation to generation in the village. The main characters also participate in the festival wearing uh, Jinbei. There are also many food stores and here too the atmosphere of a real festival is recreated and Pokemon blend in with nature. I couldn't help but take my time to look at each st uh, store one by one. So I don't know if you're going to be able to buy things at these stores or not but uh, yeah they look very important for the festival. And surprisingly, near the venue, they, they encountered the legendary Pokemon Ogapon, which is also the symbol of uh, part one, the teal mask. As you chase after them, a movie scene will begin and Ogapon's mask will uh, disappear. So I'm assuming that you find Ogapon really early on and then you basically like run after it, but it like runs away and then that's when the mask drops. So I don't think this is Ogapon throwing the mask down. I think this is the mask falling off Ogapon's face. And then the next time we fight Ogapon is when we see its like true form. At that point, the experience of the story parts comes to an end. The true face of Ogapon, which is sure to be a great interest, is something you can only enjoy after actually playing the game. So, I don't know if this is translated badly or not, but it seems that you're only going to be able to beat Ogapon and catch it once you beat the story. Um, so yeah, very interesting there. It may seem a little late now, but the atmosphere of Kitakami Village is quite different from that of the Paldea region. There are a lot of elements th uh, that feel Japanese in some way, and I'm also curious about Kieran's accented language, which is said to be from Kitakami. What caught my attention above all else was that there was a statue of uh, this, which is jade shape near the K Kitakami Center. Uh, where the festival was held, Kitakami uh, may have ties to the Jade region and the Sinnoh region. Once the distrib distribution starts, I'd like to keep that in mind as I play. So it could be strong links to other regions and stuff in the Kitakami um, DLC. Next up, uh, get useful tools for raising Pokemon, such as this at the Demon Extermin uh, Extermination Festival. Among the fun elements that can be enjoyed in Part 1, this time we were able to experience uh, the festival. Pop the four coloured balloons placed all over the special map, collect mushrooms, and transport the designated number to the mushroom stand to clear the map. So these are like the different multiplayer mini games. I'm really excited to do these. I think they're going to be really, really fun. Demon Slayer Festival can be played simultaneously with up to four people in multiplayer mode. So I had to take, so I had to take on the challenging operation with uh, me, other media outlets. So this is going to be really interesting. This whole like multiplayer thing that is up to four people. Difficulty levels are divided. So we actually have difficulty levels for this multiplayer game as well. Being beginner, inter, uh, intermediate and advanced. And this time uh, we will challenge uh, intermediate. So they're, they're taking on like the middle kind of difficulty setting. When I played the beginner level by myself to practice just before I had a good time. But perhaps because it was multiplayer or because I was an intermediate player. The number of balls I had to collect had increased considerably. So I had a hard time. There is a limit to the number of mushrooms you can hold at one time. And intermediate levels cannot be cleared by one round trip. You have to go back and forth to pick up the mushroom several times. But what becomes a problem, there are stubborn Pokemon, uh, basically, that eat the mushrooms you've just collected. So, yeah, you basically have to collect mushrooms, take them back to, like, your kind of base of operations. But then you'll have a Munchlax that's, like, snacking on your mushrooms and stuff. So when these Pokemon arrive at the mushroom stand, they will eat the mushrooms you have collected. So you need to press the R button to chase them away. They come uh, one after another from all directions, so it's quite difficult to get rid of them all. So I don't know if there's, like, a co-op section to this, where, like, one person has to stop the Munchlax from, like, getting your mushrooms, and then the other person can go out and get the mushrooms. So I guess you could make it, like, a 2v2 kind of thing. This time it was a two-person challenge, so I decided to divide the roles quite a bit. I oh, don't mind it is. If you're going to take on a more difficult challenge, it might be a better split up the role of collecting mushrooms and chasing away Pokemon. Never mind. That's exactly what it is. That sounds really cool. So you can actually do 2v2 games as well. If you clear the Demon Extermination Festival, you receive tools that can be used to train your Pokemon, such as Terra Pieces, Springs that increase your uh, points, and Mushrooms that lower your points. You can also get Mochi that can increase your points, such as uh, this and this, which have never been available before. So it seems to be new items and stuff that are available once you do these kind of um, multiplayer games. So it is definitely worth doing these games. I'm sorry that the information is not 100% accurate, so I've only used and confirmed a few of them. But these mochi are probably as effective as energy drinks, such as uh, Max Up and stuff. Now, the most notable uh, mochi type is probably this mochi. At first glance, this effect may seem like a disadvantage, as if you use it, all of your Pokemon's points will be lost. So I'm supposing that's EV points, but if it's useful when you want to change the way your Pokemon are raised. So that's actually really good. So before, we only had like the berries and stuff that would lower the EV points. But now it looks like there is going to be an item that basically decreases everything. Which is really, really good. Really, really good. I'm really happy that's the thing. Um, so in addition to these regular rewards, it seems like you can also receive a special reward by clearing the Demon Extermination Festival. During the experience, we were able to see new tools and charms that increase the experience points and Pokemon gain in battle just by holding them. So it seems to be like another kind of lucky egg variation of getting XP. Again, it's very easy to get XP in these games anyway with like the candy, but it's still cool to get like these kind of items. 
And there are still many new elements that I've been able to write about so far, so I'll introduce them at the end. So we have this, uh, which is the Loto, basically the um, the selfie stick. So when you arrive at the town, you'll receive uh, this stick from the community center manager. Selfie mode allows you to take photos with a wider angle of view. Also, if you give a signal to a Pokemon you are walking with in the field, the Pokemon will wait for you there and you'll be able to share photos taken during Union Circle with Circle members. Many new features have been added. And also we have um, Poltergeist here as well, just like a new image about it. I feel like it might evolve, but I don't know for sure. Same At the time of the experience, it was completely new to me, but information was announced later, so please check the article for more details. And then I have Diplin here as well. Um, again, he's obviously got Syrup Bomb and stuff like that. And as well as that, addition of uh, this. So basically, this is new TMs. So the number of types of machines that can be made with the machines have increased, so we can now make more TMs and stuff. Uh, many of the teaching techniques that appeared in the Isle of Armor from Sword and Shield's expansion pass were seen, such as the glass... Uh, basically grassy glide stuff like that we'll go over all this in a minute we're also able to confirm a machine with this technique it seems that pokemon will be able to learn new moves with the addition of the move machine in addition a memorable filter function has been added to the move machine you'll be able to display only the skills that your pokemon can learn so that's really really cool so basically um i'm assuming you can select a pokemon then it will show you all the moves that it moves that it can learn that you can then craft and as well as that there's new items as well so uh, like new character customization stuff so by receiving the fa the fashion card midori the number of items you can purchase at the boutique and the number of hairstyles you can choose from the hair salon will increase so more hairstyles more um clothes stuff like that and also new picnic supplies so at picnic you can rearrange picnic supplies such as tablecloths uh cups and water bottles but now you can also rearrange the chairs if you talk to the old man near kitakami center he will give you a chair with a pattern that matches the tablecloth you have maybe picnics will be a little bit more fun so that's basically the review but we also have like more information about it here on like cerebi and stuff so basically this has got a massive breakdown of all the stuff so some new previews were released for scarlet and Violet's dlc from uh, the outlets in japan uh, these include some further details about expanding on elements revealed recently, but also confirm some new TMs um, that are in the game. Uh, it notes that the moves are Grassy Glide, Burning Jealousy, Lash Out, and Poltergeist were seen as well as Toxic. So all of those are going to be TMs in the Teal Mask. I'm sure more will be as well, but those are all 100% confirmed. It also confirms that more clothing, hairstyles, and picnic supplies will be available at the Kids Kami Center, and you can even now rearrange chairs at the picnic table. In addition to Mochi, when completing the Ogre Austin minigame where you pop balloons, you can also get Terra Shards. That's a really cool way of... Uh, getting more Terra Shards. I really hope there's a way to get Herba Mystica as well, but we'll have to see. There are three difficulties, beginner, intermediate, and advanced, and you can play with other players to complete it. There's also new items, including one that increases the experience points gain in battle uh, when held. When your Pokemon pose for a photo, when you have the Roto Stick, you can also select a song, which will cause your Pokemon to react. You can also share photos among friends when connected via a union circle. We'll provide more stuff when we get it. So there's nothing in here about the EV thing. I'm not sure um, if... Let me just refresh that. Yeah, still nothing here about the EV thing that we've obviously spoke about. So I'm not sure if that's been translated badly or not. But it, it seems like it's going to be a thing. And we also have this by Pokestu Tutami. Seems like we get the selfie stick from the head of Kitakami. Additionally, uh, the options, photography menu options have increased. And then Y seems to still be the same as base game. But there is also an X button, meaning handheld. So that's, I guess, the way that you can switch between them. And as well as that, in the article it states that while Carmine doesn't have much of an accent, Kieran often speaks in Kitakami dialect, uh, which is the accent using words like these, both of which dialect words uh, dialect words used in uh, the prefecture where real life Kitakami is located, as well as in some instances in some other areas as well. So the two are siblings, but it's likely that Carmine intentionally tries to avoid using dialect speak as teenagers from small areas can think of their local dialects as uncool. So that is basically all of the new gameplay features for the DLC that we've uh, unmask today. There's a lot of stuff to go over, but a lot of really exciting stuff as well. The multiplayer stuff sounds really fun. I like how there's like different difficulty levels and also there's like 2v2 game modes and every man for himself game modes. It looks really, really cool. But uh, yeah, I mean, not long at all now until the DLC comes out. So uh, whether we get any more information about it, we probably will. But uh, either way, that is going to be everything for today's video. If you enjoyed, drop a like down below. Leave a comment what gameplay feature you're most excited about. Subscribe if you're brand new. That's everything from me though. Have a great rest of your day. And until next time, peace.